Okay, let's get to the next dispute. <laughs> uh, this uh, quote from uh, J.B.S. Haldane uh, was recorded by John Maynard Smith, the game theory, game theorist. Uh, he claims um, on J.B.S. Haldane's deathbed. And um, there's a lot of interesting politics involved in that, which perhaps in the conversation we might get to. But I think most people in this room are very familiar with this idea. Where does this come from? Well, oh, actually, I should put this, show you this. Uh, interestingly, counting with genes matters because it's foundational for our understanding of pro-social, anti-social behavior. The basic premise is, as with the ants, if you're closely related, you'll be nice, and if you're distantly related, you'll be horrible, in a nutshell. And whenever you see this area discussed, you typically see this quote from Tennyson in Memoriam, that nature is red and tooth and claw, actually, antisociality is, should be foundational, and it's often paired with this rather violent painting by George Stubbs, of a lion attacking a horse. And it sort of represents in some sense in microcosm what all evolutionary biologists are dealing with. The foundational theory of Haldane's remark is in fact the theory that explains those relatedness coefficients in the ants that we covered in our little quiz. And the paper that did this was Bill Hamilton's 1964 series of papers on the genetical evolution of social behavior. These are very, very famous papers in my field. One of the things that's interesting about them, by the way, is that Bill was mathematically quite the autodidact. And so he invented weird notational systems for counting and indexing, in, uh, indexing variables that led to no end of confusion. And so part of the, the problem of interpreting Hamilton's system of counting genes is actually trying to understand Hamilton's system of counting in mathematics. But that aside, uh, he came up with this very celebrated inequality, which I show at the bottom there in red. Uh, B times R should be greater than C if you're going to observe the evolution of an altruistic trait. B here is the benefit to an actor. R is the relatedness between an actor and a recipient. And C, uh, no, so B is the benefit to the recipient. R is the relatedness between the actor and the, the recipient. And C is the cost to the actor. So if I was going to do something nice to Carlos, um, he would receive a benefit B. I, susp I suppose we're not related, but let's say that we were. Um, and I would pay a cost for it. I would only do that if that inequality held. And right from the beginning, people were asking, what are these Bs, Rs, and Cs? Can you see them in the world? Can, how do you measure them? What are their units? And it was debated, but it was fairly tame. And then in 2010, Martin Novak, Karina Tarnita, and Ed Wilson wrote this paper. And they said, you know what? You can't count them because they're fictional. Actually, B, R, and C are the product of bad coarse graining. That uh, they're not essentially like thermodynamic matter states. They're not actually even principled. And this generated an absolute, I guess the polite word would be contretemps, but the accurate word would be brawl. Uh, where 130 prominent evolutionary biologists wrote back and said, what absolute rubbish. You know, they, um, they have completely misunderstood Bill's theory and they've unnecessarily you know, assaulted what is considered to be one of the edifices of modern evolutionary theory. Richard Dawkin weighed in with his blog and uh, as is typical, I think, of, of Richard Dawkins, he said he'd, he'd, he'd recognized these faults long before the critique. And, um, and Joan Alira even wrote an article in the, New York, in the New Yorker where he said, you know, you know, we should be attending to this dispute. After all, this is the mathematics of sociality. I mean, this is about being good or being evil. It, it has implications to society at large. 
this little debate around counting genes. So this is, I apologize a little, this is my most mathematical slide. But now we understand that there are really two debates that were going on here. And this is a nice re uh, review from Jonathan Birch at Cambridge. And this has been understood for a while. That there are really two forms of Hamilton's rule, a special one and a general one. The special one comes from comparative statics, from establishing the conditions for the stability of a fixed point, the so-called Nash equilibrium, in a game where Bs and Cs are the benefits and costs of cooperating and defecting, for example, in a prisoner's dilemma game. You'll note that there's no R here, but what R is, is the probability of a strategy encountering itself. It has nothing to do with shared genes. It has everything to do with the probability of meeting your own strategy. And so it now turns out that in the more general interpretation, relatedness is just a proxy for encountering something similar to yourself. It's, somehow the genes aren't the fundamental thing. They're just a mechanism that enables the fundamental thing, which is uh, encountering oneself. The problem with this is if you put in different payoffs that in include other variables that aren't B and C, well then that inequality will no longer be respected. You could put a D in, for example, on, on the diagonal, plus D or something, and it would fail. So there are conditions where Hamilton's rule is true. R is no longer about shared genes. It's about interaction rates. Um, but by and large, it's probably unlikely to be observed in the natural world. And B's and C's here presumably are on units of benefit and cost. It could be energetic, resource-based, and so on. The more general form of the equation is derived thus. <laughs> what you do is you write a linear regression equation. That's what W is. You regress fitness on the genome, your genome, or a recipient's genome, G prime. You plug that into a dynamical system known as the Price equation. It's a very uh, well-known equation in evolutionary dynamics. And then you just interpret these Cs and Rs and Bs as regression coefficients. The point about this is this equation is true by construction. This is an irrefutable mathematical statement that describes the evolutionary process. There is no empirical way of going into the world and showing that this is not true. Right. And this has led to the other criticism of Bill's theory for counting genes, which is either it's wrong, it's a special case, or it has to be true. And this is a kind of a deep question about the nature of tautology when it comes to applied mathematics. Mm. And we all might have our own opinion on this, but I rather like Wittgenstein's opinion in the Tractatus, where he says that the logic of the world, which is shown by tautologies and the propositions of logic, are shown correspondingly in the equations of mathematics. So to the extent that you believe that human mathematics captures regularities in the world, a tautology need not be uninformative. 